Hello, and welcome to My Tiny Tarot Practice. I'm Amelia Fruby, and on this show, I share my journey through the tarot going card by card in this season through the Major Arcana. Today, I am joined by our second ever guest, Cecily Saylor. Cecily is also this season's presenting sponsor for her amazing book, Tarot for Creative Spirits. I'm really excited to introduce you all to Cecily and have a conversation with her about the hanged one today. So let me tell you a little bit about Cecily's work and then we'll dive in. Cecily Saylor is a tarot reader, writer, and coach who supports and mentors creative spirits to develop a more mystical and spiritual relationship with their creativity, themselves, and the movement of life. Cecily is the founder of Typewriter Tarot, a project that supports creative spirits by offering spaces of magic, creativity, inspiration, and community. Before she became a full-time mystic, Cecily earned an MFA in creative writing and worked in journalism and creative arts nonprofits. When she's not creating for Typewriter Tarot, she's playing with her two dogs, Queenie and Lila, looking at birds, seeking out ghost stories, and doing her best to make the world a better place. Welcome, Cecily. I'm so happy to have you on my tiny tarot practice. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Today, we're here to talk about the hanged one. And I wanted to invite you to begin by describing your image of the hanged one. What does this card look and feel like to you? I love to turn to nature for images examples, wisdom. So there's two I'll take from nature. And one, the first one is the spider, who I think it's important to note the spider in order to sit in the web and just be still there and be suspended also does a lot of activity to create that web that they're going to sit in. There's the weaving and reweaving and repairing sometimes And then there's just the waiting and the spiders there in the middle, practicing this presence, this patience, exercising stillness. I don't know what spiders think about when they're (laughs) sitting there. They're maybe thinking about how hungry they are. I don't know. But my impression when I come upon a spider and look at them closely in their web in this way, sometimes they are upside down and they also have eight eyes. And so they have such a different view. They're not only like perceiving the world through eight lenses, but also sometimes oriented upside down like the hanged one. And so they get this perspective that's just very foreign to us. And so I think that's one example that I like to turn to. And then another perhaps this is the more obvious one, is the chrysalis of a caterpillar transforming into a butterfly. And that creature in that phase is in this space of suspension and undergoing like a complete transformation. You know, we know that what happens inside the chrysalis is that the caterpillar fully dissolves and then reconstitutes into this new creature something that we don't see happen, I think, with any other living thing that we know about. From the outside, it looks like nothing's happening in there. It looks like a static object, but so much is changing and so much is happening really quietly. And, you know, when the butterfly emerges, they have this view of the world that's quite different from the view it had as a caterpillar. And I think that's an important part of the hanged one. You know, we see that figure upside down, um, viewing the world with a 180 degree different angle and that illuminated halo around the head, this kind of like symbol of awakening. One little detail I love about the caterpillar, the butterfly emerging, I heard recently is that if you come upon one and you see the butterfly like struggling to get out and you try to help it or try to speed along the process or assist it in some way that is actually very detrimental to the butterfly and it may not survive. It really needs to take its time to come out of that space in its own way, gathering its strength, you know, little by little. And that kind of patience and stillness and slowness continues even in the process of emergence. And I think that's something that is important for us to remember if we're in a hanged one kind of 
time. Yeah, that's so beautiful. I love these two images that you've brought us from nature of the hanged one, the spider hanging suspended from the web or the chrysalis, this in-between liminal space of between caterpillar and butterfly. And particularly this lesson that you gave us that I had also, I had not heard this before, that in that experience of the chrysalis and coming out of that becoming the butterfly, butterfly really has to do that for themselves. And interruption or perhaps well-meaning people thinking that they're just like doing it for them is actually detrimental to the butterfly's growth. And that feels very resonant to my experience, even of personal growth in the past. You've already kind of moved into this, but what are other themes or lessons that you associate with the hanged one? I'll start with a personal example, and I associate this card with a time in my life about three years ago when I was laid off from a tech job that I had gotten about 18 months before after leaving nonprofit work. I had never been fired before. I'm a Capricorn sun and moon, so, you know, layoffs hurt everyone, but it was a big, like, identity ego blow. And I had typewriter tarot as a side hustle at that point for about five years. And I had been longing to run it full time and to support myself with that business, but was very, very afraid. Also as a Capricorn, (laughs) double Capricorn, that um, like regular paycheck is very stabilizing. And so After that layoff, there was just this period. I think I applied for one more job that I didn't get. I, you know, felt like the universe was like, you wanted this, it's here. And the hanged one came in kind of in that space. There was also this like peeling some onion back and kind of shedding a bunch of layers of my identity or my life in terms of how I related to time to money, to work, how I identified myself as someone who was working. And I really had to start to kind of reimagine who I was going to be and how I was going to lead myself. And of course, the same person kind of existed across both. But that period of like decompression and deprogramming and finding my own rhythms in my day and like thinking about how was I going to do things differently when working for myself. And so that period really felt like a hanged one transition where things were changing for me. It was slower. It was, there was more stillness. There was more contemplation and reflection. And I think to kind of take that example and offer it more broadly for others, I think if you're encountering the hanged one, and you probably cover this in your other episode, is like, this may be an invitation to slow down, to practice more stillness, even in a somewhat active way, changing your relationship to urgency and letting yourself change and kind of thinking about how you are changing and how you want to change. And also noticing how your perspective and your view of yourself and your view of the world is changing. And then because the hanged one is upside down, I think there's something about like, how can we get our blood flowing in a kind of different way or different direction? You know, so an inversion in yoga is one like way you can literally do that for a temporary time. But kind of thinking about that as a curious metaphorical question for yourself. Yeah, I always love to think of the hanged one quite literally. I actually like to take all of the tarot cards very literally. So with the hanged one, exactly, I'm always thinking of like legs up the wall or downward dog or any sort of inverted position. I also like to laugh and share that, for instance, when the sun was my card of the year, that year I got quite a few bad sunburns. <laughs> and I was like, well, this card is is coming for me. It's a, it's a year of a lot of sun. Um, but I think that So often we can approach the tarot as like these cards are shrouded in mystery, and they are, yet they are also quite literal. We can take them very literally. And 
sometimes they just mean exactly what they say they mean or what they show in a particular deck. So I love I love those examples and lessons. I feel like inversion we just talked about is sort of a practice that you can take up when you pull this card, but is there any other question or prompt or practice that you might offer listeners who have pulled the hang one or are working with this card? Yeah, I will just turn to my workbook, Yeah, Tarot for Creative Spirits, which has several prompts for every card in the tarot. And for the hanged one, the prompt is to pull two additional cards. And the first one represents this idea of right side up. And the second card represents upside down. And then you take the right side up card and you kind of think like, how is this related to something in my life? You try to find a correlative in your lived experience and sort of anchor it there. And then look at the second card, the upside down card as, or with the question, how does this second card, this upside down card, give a different perspective or a different point of view about this thing in my life that's represented in the right side up card? Because I think what happens when we change our perspective is it's we can't really anticipate the perspective shift. Like it's going because we haven't had the perspective yet. And so those are always really exciting and really refreshing and They bring in some new element that feels surprising, even if part of it might feel a little inevitable, perhaps. And so then using those two cards, your upside down and your right side up card, you can kind of think about like, how is your perspective shifting or how are you being invited to change the way that you're seeing something in your life? And another part of the prompt is to go out and nature and go for a walk or sit somewhere out in the in the wilderness and just watch for a while and kind of welcome any signs or visitors things you might notice it could be a stranger you pass on the trail or some shell or seed or bird or creature that you encounter and see how this element might enhance this perspective you feel like is coming forward. I think that tarot is about change. Like it's a way of telling stories of change in our life. And so it also helps us kind of tune in to what's changing and just bring this level of awareness to like, how am I changing now? How am I changing now? How am I being being invited to change again? So that's kind of a fun prompt to pull two cards and see what do they have to do with each other? How are they related and how do they contrast? Thank you for these practices. I really enjoy both of them because I'm feeling like they have slightly different relationships to change. Like when we go on the walk in nature and we kind of invite in a sign, I feel like we're being very like open and responsive to whatever change might be coming our way or whatever change we might be undergoing in that moment and support from the universe through that. And then with the two cards, I almost feel like it's perhaps slightly more active. Like it's an invitation to say, okay, what's the story you're telling here? And what else could that story be? And that to me also feels like one of the major life skills I've learned in therapy, perhaps, right? Is like how to change the narrative, how to reframe what's going on. And I think that the hanged one does invite both of these approaches to change, right? Both that sense of suspension, like we have to receive the change and the more active, maybe I need to get upside down and look at this differently. And so I'm really enjoying how these two practices in your book invite in these different relationships to change through this card. Speaking of your book, Tarot for Creative Spirits, I'm wondering if there are any moments in the creation of this book where you kind of had a moment of surrender or suspension or or active change. Like, were there times when you brought a bit of the hanged one into your book writing process? Yeah, I f- it feels now like the hanged one was a ongoing part of this because the book is the result of an iterative process. Originally, I was teaching 
workshops on each of the suits and then the major arcana. And for each workshop, I created a set of journaling prompts for every card so people could do that on their own. And then after doing those five workshops over maybe a year or so, I was like, well, this could be a book. And the second book was smaller. All of the prompts were lumped together at the top of the page. There were no illustrations. Um, There wasn't a ton of space to write, so I encouraged people to get a separate journal to write in. It was just like an experimental version. And then I also created kind of a casual group so people could have some community as we went through the prompts. And through that process, I really, like someone in the group started doing very artistic things with their journal and like collaging and drawing and mixing that with their words. And I was like, oh, this book needs some art of its own and it needs more prompts that invite people to create little works of art in a low stakes way. The creative prompts, the drawing prompts were not there before. So in that way, it's kind of like, let me surrender to what the book is out there doing with people and let me actively listen to what's coming back around that. And then let me follow that and bring that into the next version. Thank you for sharing that. I feel like knowing a little more of the story of the book also really supports my experience of it. As I've shared on this show before, the book feels like a whole creative course in the tarot. And I'm hearing that it came out of workshops and community and these shared experiences. And as I approach each card, as I move through it, as we create this major arcana season, it really is an invitation to not only approach the cards in an intellectual way, or even in an intuitive way, but also in this like generative creative way, which I find to be really necessary for me to ever like integrate and really deeply learn something. Like I can, I mean, I love tarot books. I've read many of them. I talk about them on the show all the time, (laughs) but reading itself doesn't make it sink in for me. And then also like kind of sitting with and intuiting a little bit gets it deeper in there, but not, it's not fully a part of me until I've taken that third step into the creativity, into the generativity. And I feel that as I work through your book that I'm really able to finally like bring these tarot archetypes into like who I am and how I approach the world. And it's a real gift. So I guess just like, thank you for creating this. Thank you for that reflection. And it makes me think about like when I was starting to learn tarot, I really did a kind of like good student sort of like academic not like highly intellectual approach, but like cataloging different definitions and trying to doing a little bit of memorization. And now seven years later into a tarot practice, I feel like the cards have an energy and that that's a way, obviously we bring language to that to describe what they mean or to help someone else understand something in a reading. But the first feeling is like an energetic one. The prompts are meant to kind of help people feel into that energy in their own body or intuition, whether they see that through color or imagery or just like a vibe, I guess. So I'm glad it's functioning in that way or it's having that effect. Yeah, absolutely. Is there anything else that you want to say about The Hanged One or share with us in this episode? I think I'll just add that it's interesting. This card is kind of a hinge card. It's almost halfway through the progression of the major arcana. And it comes after justice when we've discovered something about our values and anchored into some fundamentals in ourself and made some commitment to take action around something that maybe before was important, but not something we were attending to as fully as we might like, or as our integrity might suggest, or that's how I kind of think about that card. And then comes death on the other side of the hanged one, where we, it's like, there's this mini death (laughs) in the hanged one where we change perspective. We let go of this old view and we can't really go back to seeing things the same way. And 
then comes the death card, which really does require um, and reveal to us a very, a more profound change, perhaps. So I think that's kind of interesting about how this card connects those two things. Yeah, I love that. I always like to approach the each card in the major arcana as like a step on our journey, our fool's journey through the path. Thank you so much, Cecily, for joining me for this episode. Thank you, listeners, for tuning in. I have already perhaps gushed about Tarot for Creative Spirits enough, but I would like to take one more opportunity to encourage you to check out and get your own copy of this book. It is our presenting sponsor for this fifth and final season of the show, and Cecily has very generously provided a discount code. So if you head to the show notes and grab the link in the code there, you can take $12 off your copy of the book. And I think that's it for this episode. May we all take our time in the chrysalis as we become butterflies. And I'll be back for our next episode soon. Take care.